The phenomena of excitation, fluorescence, and phosphorescence underlie the operation of a most intriguing instrument, the laser. The name is an acronym, Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. Although the first laser was conceived in 1958 and actually built in 1960, the concept of stimulated emission was predicted by Albert Einstein in 1917. This is my daughter Leslie, with husband Bob in back of her, tinkering with a laser along with teaching buddy David Wall. And here's my City College of San Francisco colleague, Frank Kaler, who is aligning lenses and fiber optic delivery devices with green laser light. To understand a laser, we must first discuss coherent light. Incandescent light is incoherent. It's chaotic. A beam of incoherent light spreads out after a short distance, becoming wider and wider and less intense with increased distance. Even if the beam is filtered so that it consists of single frequency waves, monochromatic light, it is still incoherent. That's because the waves are out of phase with one another. A beam of photons in coherent light, on the other hand, have the same frequency, same phase, and same direction. Same, same, same. Photons in the beam are identical copies of one another. This is the light a laser emits. A beam of coherent light that spreads very little and weakens very little. Here's multiple laser beams. You don't see a laser beam from the side unless it scatters off something in the air. Like sunbeams or moonbeams, what you see are the particles in the scattering medium, not the beam itself. When the beam strikes a diffuse surface, part of it is scattered toward your eye and it looks like a dot. A laser is not a source of energy. It is simply a converter of energy that takes advantage of the process of stimulated emission to concentrate a certain fraction of its energy, commonly only about 1%, into radiant energy of a single frequency moving in a single direction. Like all devices, a laser can put out no more energy than is put into it. There are all manners of lasers today. There are lasers that produce infrared through ultraviolet and beyond. Some models can be tuned to various frequency ranges. Every laser has a source of atoms called an active medium, which can be a gas, liquid, or solid. The first laser was a ruby crystal. Let's take a look at the laser action in a gas, the popular helium-neon laser. A. The laser consists of a narrow pyrex tube that contains a low-pressure gas mixture consisting of 85% helium, that's the small black dots, and 15% neon, the large red dots. B. When a high voltage current zaps through the tube, it excites both helium and neon atoms to their usual higher states, and they immediately undergo de-excitation except for one state in the helium that is characterized by a prolonged delay before de-excitation, a metastable state. Since this state is relatively stable, a sizable population of excited helium atoms, that's the black open circles, is built up. These atoms wander about in the tube and act as an energy source for neon, which has an otherwise hard-to-come-by metastable state very close to the energy of the excited helium. C. When the excited helium atoms collide with neon atoms in their lowest energy state, to their ground state, the helium gives up its energy to neon, which is boosted to its metastable state. That's the red open circles. The process continues and the population of excited neon atoms soon outnumbers neon atoms in a lower energy excited state. This inverted population is, in effect, waiting to radiate its energy. D. Some neon atoms eventually de-excite and radiate red photons in the tube. When this radiant energy passes other excited neon atoms, they're stimulated into emitting photons exactly in phase with the radiant energy that stimulated the emission. Photons pass out of the tube in irregular directions, giving it a red glow. E. 
but photons moving parallel to the axis of the tube are reflected from specially coated parallel mirrors at the ends of the tube. The reflected photons stimulate the emission of photons from other neon atoms, thereby producing an avalanche of photons having the same frequency, phase, and direction. F. The photons flash to and fro between the mirrors, becoming amplified with each pass. G. Some photons leak out of one of the mirrors, which is only partially reflecting. These photons make up the laser beam. In the beginning of this lesson, I said that excitation, fluorescence, and phosphorescence are involved in laser action. Can you see how excitation is involved as atoms are elevated into higher energy states? And how fluorescence is involved as atoms emit photons of less than the fully available energy? And how phosphorescence is involved as some of the photon emission is delayed? All yum physics. And what is the practical application of the laser? You don't have to look far. A better question would be, where are lasers not applied? Laser light, unknown when I was a kid, is today a part of everyday life. And that's a big yum. I want to leave you with a question. Fred Physiker asks if light slows when it enters glass. I think you know the answer. What would your answer be if Fred asked if laser light slows when it enters glass? Yes, no, or sometimes. Until next time, good energy. <laughs>